In Obama's 2013 inauguration speech, he states that all people were created to be equal, commemorating Seneca Falls for women's bravery and Selma, Alabama for putting up with the discrimination in a time of such inequality. He also commemorated Stonewall for sparking the fire for the gay revolution. Not only did Stonewall spark a revolution, but at the moment, says Phil Bachman, a gay liberation, because at the time the future of our pride could not be projected. This liberation was showing that LGBT, men and women, and the unidentified are just as important, valued, and as smart as heterosexuals. The Stonewall riots provoked a major issue in an ever-growing, ever-changing society. Many brave people were fighting for their rights as homosexuals and received unfair social discrimination, feeling deprived of certain opportunities in the world. The courageous people that protested the Stonewall Raid worked hard to prove they were not outcasts. By taking a stand in history, they broadcasted their belief that they are equal to others, creating the most influential movement in the century. The first gay liberation group was in the 1950s named the Medicine Society. The society offered a meeting place for gays and lesbians to talk about their troubles of being homosexuals and how to handle them. This created a feeling of unity among the future LGBT members. Within three years, new groups were stationed all around the country as people slowly became more open about their feelings. The leaders of the group, such as Harry Hay, proclaimed that the community would slowly work their way into society. He sought out the help of professors and people of influence in order for the population to understand their goals. He wanted to peacefully become a part of society, and the leader stated, We do not advocate a homosexual culture or community, and we believe none exists. Later, this group formed to become the LGBT, where many smaller groups branched off, and now it has become an extremely successful group in modern-day society who advocate for gay pride days and parades. Into the 1960s, there was a significant amount of bars and clubs for the purpose of gay meeting places where homosexuals could feel free and unjudged. Many of these bars and nightclubs were owned by mafias. Mafias are organized groups of people who slip past the law for their own interests. They would often pay off police to keep them out of their business. Because of the mafias, gay people were free to enjoy nights out with their significant other. At the time, many laws were put in place to prevent homosexuality. Homosexuals were faced with being under constant supervision by the Bureau if they were openly gay in public. Historians claim that federal immigration laws excluded homosexual aliens in an attempt to keep them out of our country. The Comstock Act of 1873 allowed publishers to exclude homosexual prints and papers from reaching the public eye. Around the time of the 1950s, it was illegal to dress like the opposite gender. Many customers at Stonewall felt free without judgment and dressed how they felt most comfortable, which later got them in trouble with the law. In the early morning of June 29, 1969, the police raided a gay bar called the Stonewall Inn, located in Greenwich Village in the state of New York. Around 2 a.m., police burst through the door and started to shut down the club. Many of the citizens inside the club were filled with anger and rage, which caused them to fight back. People of the crowd outside the bar started throwing bottles, papers, and rocks at the police. The police eventually struck back and arrested about eight of the people in the crowd. The police claimed that Stonewall was raided for the reason that they were without a liquor license, although many LGBT believed it was much more than that. The people at the bar that night thought it had been shut down because it was a gay bar owned by the mafias. Many LGBT also had the knowledge that many gay clubs had been raided due to homosexual discrimination. Two years earlier, in 1967, a gay bar named the Black Cat was raided on the stroke of midnight on New Year's Eve. Minutes before midnight, police were raiding outside the bar, and when the common New Year's kiss was spread around, police burst into the club and started beating many of the customers there. By the end of the night, six men were arrested, facing laws prohibiting cross-dressing and disorderly conduct. Many citizens at Stonewall the night of the raid faced similar charges. David Van Ronk was faced with assault to an officer with an unknown object. Marilyn Fowler, Raymond Castro, and Vincent DePaul were all charged with harassment for fighting back during the raid.
the LGBT were starting to take action in fighting back for their stripped rights. The day after the Stonewall Raid, the LGBT came back with more people to start forming parades and protests. Virginia Apuzzo was a lesbian woman who came to New York during the riots to participate and fight for LGBT rights. She too felt the constant fear of coming out. Years after the riots, she is still a pioneer for the gay liberation and is the executive director of the National Lesbian and Gay Task Force. Additionally, Martin Broyce participated during the riots and afterwards returned to college where he created his term papers to be gay-based. He believed that nobody would hand in a paper in 1969 that had those explicit themes, so he believed he was starting something no one else had the courage to do. Due to the help of great leaders and role models, riots after the raid lasted a total of six days. The aggressive rioting lasted three days, but the peaceful protests and pride parades lasted the duration of six days. Nothing improved right away, but it pulled the issue into the spotlight. The doors had opened, and they weren't ashamed anymore. Lillian Fatterman, a historian, says it to be the shot heard around the world because it sounded the rally for the movement. Years after the riots in 1973, the government decided to remove homosexuality as an illness. This was a major step in the gay liberation movement because it made it easier to come out of the closet for many LGBT members. In 1977, Harvey Milk gets put on board of supervisors in an attempt to repeal Proposition 6, which declared it illegal for homosexual educators to teach students. Shortly after, in 1980, the government declares that they will stop the discrimination against homosexuals. This statement was huge for the LGBT community because they are finally getting their fully deserved rights. The public eye started to turn towards gays. More people began to feel sympathetic for the mistreated homosexuals due to the police's overpowering force. In the modern day, polls show that more Americans favor gays in the workforce who are gaining more freedoms and less discrimination every day. Homosexuals are also now allowed to serve in the military, which they weren't allowed to do before. Before Stonewall, many other significant riots took place to fight for a gay liberation. The first riot dates back to 1959 in Los Angeles, California, inside a donut shop. Inside the shop, a group of drag queens, which are men that dress like women for entertainment, fought the police when they came to arrest them for congregating in a gay hangout. This action is considered the first gay uprising. Although it is the first, Stonewall is most significant because the patrons of the bar came back and fought the laws with more people. Another riot took place at Independence Hall where LGBT members from all over the country came together to demand equality. Many different groups were uprising and fighting for their rights in the 20th century. However, Stonewall is the most influential because it gained many supporters and quickly turned the public eye in favor. One major movement is in the early 20th century and was the women's suffrage movement. Although women's suffrage was successfully popular among women, Stonewall had both men and women supporting it. The average citizens of New York became sympathetic towards the LGBT, recognizing Stonewall riots as more influential than women's suffrage. Another huge movement was the civil rights. African Americans were fighting the oppression they faced in everyday life because whites thought they were the superior race. The civil rights movement had great leaders such as Martin Luther King, but the Stonewall riots had groups of people, plus leaders of the community, acting as one. Dave Singleton states that, I can't recall another civil rights movement in recent history that saw such progress after a single gavelizing event. Two years after Stonewall, there is at least one LGBT group in every major city. In 1973, being gay was no longer considered a mental illness. The first rainbow-colored flag was used in a gay pride parade on June 25, 1978. On June 26, 2015, same-sex marriage became legal in all 50 states. Stonewall was the most influential movement of its time due to the mass amount of sympathy from onlookers and the community changing its perspective towards homosexuals by abandoning the discriminatory laws.